Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, everyone. As you noticed, I, I have my shirt buttoned up to the top. I think that, what do you think is better? That or that? Doesn't matter. I've got a special treat for you guys. Uh, in order, yes, we're going to continue with the Quran, the cow, uh, for part 11. But I want to show you guys something. This is an avocado plant. Now, avocado grows straight up, just straight stock up. But while it's still young, while it's still little, I can bend it just a little bit. And what's gonna happen is it grows like sideways. And I can turn it in whatever direction I want. So, I'm gonna have two grow side by side. One, grow naturally, and then one, I'm gonna continue to twist. So, and I just use a rubber band. Like this. And I think I'll put a, ooh, I don't want to damage it. Anyways, I'll get to that another time. But I'm really excited to, I guess I'll leave that like this for now. I'm going to leave one to grow straight and one to shape. These are orchids, by the way. I'm not big into gardening, my family is, but I like seeing flowers. Uh, I just always grew up with flowers in the house and no matter how small the place was or whatever, we always had some kind of flowers and it was just something, for instance, like a, a fake flower, when I see a fake flower, one of those like plastic roses or something. I, I can't stand those. I really can't like it. To me, it just there, there's just that that the fakeness that I just can't stand. And then when when you see something that's that's real like this, it's um man. I, there's something about it. I used to work at a place called Pita Corner, and I would like almost. At least every week, I would bring like a plant and something, and I'll put it around the the restaurant. And um, they're like, "Why? Why do you keep doing that?" And I'm like, "I just can't imagine work. You spend so much time at work. You're you're basically living there, right? For the majority of the day. I can't imagine living somewhere without flowers. I just I can't. <laughs> so, um, yeah." It's important to me. But we're gonna continue right now back to the true flower. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna, uh, we stopped at 169 in the last uh, part, part 10. So we're gonna continue with 170, blind following. When it is said to them, oh wait, 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 before. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, the accursed. And uh, in the name of God, most compassionate and most merciful. It's customary to, to say that before you start reading it. So I seek protection in God from shaitan. And I ask God, Guides my mind while we read. <clears throat> 170. Line following. When it is said to them, follow what God has revealed, they reply, no. We only follow what we, what, uh, uh, hold on. We only follow what we found our forefathers practicing. Would they still do so even if their forefathers had absolutely no understanding or guidance? Examples of disbelievers. 
The example of a disbeliever's not responding to the messenger's warning is like a flock not comprehending the calls and cries of the shepherd. We are willfully dumb, deaf, dumb, and blind, so they have no understanding. You know, in the Bible it says, the shepherd knows my voice. I mean, I mean the sh I'm the shepherd and the sheep know my voice. Um, is that how this goes? My sheep know my voice. Basically, um, this reminds me, um, I'm just bringing that up because I was talking to one of my good friends, Omar. And, you know, I was telling him, like, I, I can understand, like, what's real and what's not. As one is, you know, when it comes to, to the Word of God, I, c I can tell when someone's being genuine and someone's just trying to make themselves look good, you know, through teaching the Word of God. You know, I can tell. I can tell when someone's legit really honestly about it. And they're like, how can you tell? How can, that's what he asked me, how, how can you tell? And it's just like, my response was, I know when God speaks, I know what the truth is, and I know what ego sounds like. You know, I know the voice of my shepherd. I know the voice of my maker. And when there is something different than that, that makes me nervous. That, mm, no. So when you when you hear ego, you know, when somebody's, I don't know how to describe that, but that example brought me, brought me that memory. <clears throat> so like, you can tell, usually your heart will tell you before your mind will. You'll just feel it. So if you, I guess it's just, it's just that familiar, familiar feel of, of when you know something is true, when you know it. Like you might not know it up here, but you know here what's true. So there's just that, I guess I don't know how else to explain it. I, I lack the words to further elaborate. So, in lieu of that, let's get back to this right here. <clears throat> um, okay, they are, um, we're going to start again, continue on again, at 172, Forbidden Foods. O oh, believers, eat from good things we have provided for you, and give thanks to God. If you truly worship Him alone, He has only forbidden you to eat carrion, blood, and swine. And what is sl and um, what is slaughtered in the name of any other god? But if someone is compelled by necessity, neither driven by desire nor exceeding immediate need, they will be they will not be sinful. God, surely God is all forgiving and most merciful. So, um, <clears throat> I'll break that down real quick. Uh, today I was at the masjid earlier, and I was asking, what is karyon? Carry on. It's C A R R I O N. Carry on blood, swine, and things that are um, slaughtered in the name of another god. So uh, apparently, carry on, what that meant, or however that's pronounced, it means like like roadkill, something that's already dead when you found it. It's um, I'm not talking about like the supermarket where the chicken's already dead. <laughs> I mean, hopefully. That chicken's already dead when you find it at the supermarket, but I'm talking about like, there's, you know, a car ran over a turtle and you pick that turtle up and you, you grill it and cook it. Um, I'm not gonna say who, but some someone did that. Someone was a wild person once before. But anyways, that's forbidden, okay? Don't don't eat anything that has already been like already dead. It's, uh, no blood. Uh, swine, swine. Check this out. Uh, pig doesn't sweat. From what I understood, a pig doesn't sweat. So all the toxins that it eats in, it it carries in its adipose tissue 
which is your, your fat cells. And the adipose tissues have huge vacuoles. That's what stores up that, that extra fatty tissue. So basically, a lot of that, that nasty, nasty stuff that's supposed to be sweat, you know, sweat is supposed to get rid of it. Um, it's going to be stuck there. So um, when you're eating it, um, it's not good for you. You're eating a lot of toxins. Um, so that's, that's what I, I heard once or twice. <clears throat> and then um, what is slaughtered in the name of any other god? I guess giving homage to a, an, another god. Because, well, I'm not going to add commentary to that one because I think it speaks for itself. And I have nothing to add to that. But if someone is compelled by necessity, neither driven by desire nor exceeding immediate need, they will not be sinful. So, listen, if that's all you have, if, if, if a uh, roadkill turtle is all you have to eat, you're not sinful. Uh, that's an, an extreme example, but if, but if that's all you have, you know, you're not driven by desire or immediate need. I mean, it's just immediate need, not exceeding it. You're fine. So, God is understanding of your situation. Like, if there, there was a there's a news story about um, a hotel that um, served Muslims uh, bacon uh, during Ramadan, <clears throat> and um, I don't know the full story, but basically, <clears throat> you know, obviously they were upset, um, and people did take action on that, which is good, but. If that's what you have, and that's all you have, you're not sinful to eat that. God understands situations that are out of the ordinary. Alhamdulillah. You know, I love the fact that God repeatedly says who he is, how what his nature is. He, he describes... The, he describes himself so that we can understand him, you know. Obviously, we can't, we don't see God. We don't, we don't talk to him like, like we do normally to, to people. So how, how else would we know the personality of God? How can we love God? How can we follow God? Something that, you know, is un, unseen to us like that. So it's, it's great to have this, this written. So it gives us, that idea, that, that 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 picture of God, He's surely all forgiving and most merciful. Moving on, hiding the truth. Indeed, those who hide God's revelations, trading them for a fleeting gain, consuming nothing but fire into their bellies, God will neither speak to them on the day of judgment, nor will He purify them, and they will suffer a painful punishment. Okay, that seems pretty harsh, so let's read that again. Okay, those who hide God's revelations, trading them for a fleeting gain. So, if you take God's word and you twist it for some benefit of yours, and that pisses God off. He, he will neither speak on to them on the day of judgment, nor will he purify them, and they will suffer a painful punishment. Wow. Okay, so let's let's avoid that. Let's avoid um, taking what we know it to be true and turning it into you know twisting it so we can benefit. Let's not do that ever. Aud billah. God protect us. All right. <clears throat> Let's never do that. Whew. That's scary. That's scary. Okay. 
They are the ones who trade guidance for misguidance and forgiveness for punishment. How persistent are they in pursuit of fire? That is because God has revealed the book in truth. And surely those who differ regarding it are totally engrossed in opposition. I'm not going to spend my whole time doing commentary. I'm going to keep reading. True righteousness. Righteousness is not in turning your faces to the east or west. Rather, the righteous are those who believe in God in the last day, the angels, the book, and the prophets, who give charity out of their cherished wealth to relatives, orphans, the poor, needy travelers, beggars, and for freeing captives. It encourages freeing captives. It encourages that. You know, I had someone tell me they're not going to listen to the Quran because it's just a bunch of slave traders. Someone told me that. No, it encourages those who, you know, use their money for their relatives, their family, orphans, people who have no one else, the poor, needy travelers, people who are just in weird situations, beggars, and freeing captives. So obviously, no. Not a bunch of tra slave traders. No. A bunch of slave freers. That's, that's the people of, 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 of the word. People of the deen. So I'm, uh, that just kind of, I'm kind of got mad for a second, but just some people will twist the words of, words of God. So anyways, <clears throat> and for freeing uh, uh, captives, who establish prayer, pay alms tax, and keep the pledges they make. Keep your word. When you say inshallah, it doesn't mean we'll see. It means it, I will do it unless God stops me. So, yeah, let's, let's think about what we say when we say, inshallah. All right. Or wallahi. Wallah. Let's think about that. <clears throat> and keep the pledges they make. And who are patient in times of suffering and adversity. Have sovereign. Because truly, they, they are, they're going to be blessed abundantly. They're truly rightly guided. We talk about that, I think, in part seven or eight, part eight, maybe, about sabr. And in the heat of battle, who are patient in the heat of battle, in, in the times of real stress. It is they who are true in faith, and it is they who are mindful of God. So, we're told what not to do, and we're told what to do. Don't eat garbage. Things that are obviously bad for you. And things that are dedicated to other gods, praising other gods rather than him. Don't mix up, knowingly mix up God's word for something kind of beneficial. Don't do that. Believe but here what we, here's what we do. Believe in God in the last day. The angels, the book, the books, the prophets. And give out charity. From what you're given, give back. Give to the people that need it. Now it says first to, to, to relatives, to orphans, poor, needy travelers, beggars. Free the people that need to be freed. Uh, whether it's debt or it's actual physical captivity. That actually happens to this day. And also debt is a form of, of, of slavery. Establish prayer. Pay your alms tax, which is 2.5%. Uh, 
instead of 10%, the Christians, they tithe 10%. Um, the 2.5, that's God's. He gave it to you. So give back. And then um, keep the promises you make. And be patient in times of your suffering, adversity, and in the heat of battle when things are really starting to go go down the drain. Where they're circling the drain, like, you know what's going on. And then when you're already down the drain, like, keep that, keep a little bit of sabr, patience. Keep that patience. And those of you who see those going through sabr, encourage them. Give news to those who are patiently enduring. So remember that. It is they who are true in faith and is they who are mindful of God so keeping keep you know I've noticed that it's hard to be patient but whenever I would do my salah before I really even knew all about knew anything about salah I just knew I wanted to pray to God and I, and I would get down and I'd say I know you, you waggle your finger, right, when you put it on your knee and you do that. And I, I wasn't really sure what, what it was for, but I would say, God, in the end, after I'm done with this life, it's going to be me and you. That's all that's left. No one's going to answer for me, and I'm not going to answer for anybody else. It's going to be me and you. Help me to be, my, to, to, to be, help me to be one of those that you're, you're proud of. Help me to be in your favor. Before anything. And I found that having that prayer, even though the Salah was not correct, but having that prayer, that mindfulness of God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cry. Like, I'm, you know, but like it, it, I do so because it means so much to me. Oh, man. I, I'm going to be known as the guy who reads the Quran and just cries on, on, on camera. <laughs> Leave Brittany alone. Let me know if you actually know that reference. A little, little old pop culture. But anyways, yeah, yeah. It really strikes the heart because I remember I didn't know how to pray, but man... That's what I wanted. Oh, man. I don't know if I'm really gonna have, to, uh, gonna have uh, uh, be able to finish this video, but anyways, I'm just gonna leave you with this: that uh, that mindfulness, just remembering that hey, in the end, it's just gonna be me and you. And uh, that gives me the strength. To do what I know is right. To be kinder. To just... Whatever the situation, I know that one, when I'm mindful of God, I'm, I am a little more understanding. A lot more understanding. Uh, I'm a lot more patient. And I just act... I, I'm a different person whenever I'm mindful of God. And Salah, having the five daily prayers, right? Those are for us. It brings us back to standing. You're praying. You're standing right before God. And you're talking to Him. And that mindfulness of your... Man, once you're done with that prayer, you can... You go back to your business. You're a different person. You, like, seriously. One, if you have it in your mind that in the end it's really just going to be you and him, you have to answer for whatever, what you say, what you do, man. Man, that changes you. And consistently doing that over time, it changes the way you think. You start having a mentality of. That, 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 I forget, that God mindfulness, there's, there's a word for it I can't quite remember, but when, when we don't, when we are not mindful of God, when we don't 
use that as a ha- don't use use prayer as a habit when we don't use mindfulness as a habit what happens is it's replaced with a different set of mind mind um we pick up habits that are not good for us we pick up habits that are uh in 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 the russian term lukave or like um like a a bad type of clever like a scheming like a devious you know um that kind of mindset you know no matter how good you might think you are ultimately you're going to end up being selfish might look altruistic or like yeah i'm doing something charitable it's but it's for yourself really if you don't have that mindfulness for god um, unfortunately, yeah, you can you can try to be as good as you want, but really, who who sets the standard for what is good? So, I know before before I you know before my journey with God, I was a different person. Even even through that beginning, it was that it was a transition. Man, if I were to stop reading this book, if I were to stop reading this book, it would be like me pouring out all the water from here. Yep. And just letting it sit, wither, and die. That's what would happen with me as a person. I would change into somebody you wouldn't recognize it anymore. Because it's God that shows me what is good. And God teaches me little by little how to be better and how to improve my life. And honestly, self, I I want to learn every word in here and applied it in my life self for selfish reasons because it, it it benefits me it makes my life better it makes but not not only that but it makes the lives around me better so ultimately it goes back to improving my my life so if you really want to want to be selfish start improving your life you know because that's the reason why I did. And, and, and it has. Um, man. Yeah. I don't know where I started, why I started getting all worked up. Which, I'm sorry. Ed. Maybe I'm still a little hungry right now. It's like one o'clock. It's still Ramadan, so I'm kind of you know, try to be patient. But anyways, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, read, you know, just read. Just I wasn't doing anything right now, so I'd come down, read a little Quran. Um, and I'll show you my plant. These are avocados, um, just regular. Yeah, I wanted to show off a little bit on that. Um, guys, um, thank you. For watching um, again a- anything that is written that's true if my commentary that could could take that with a grain of salt um, if you got friends that are not subscribed to me tell them to subscribe to me um, yeah I mean it'd be kind of cool to one day have uh, videos uh, monetized. That'd be really awesome. Um, so that um, you know, I, I could I could work by studying the Quran. I could work by going out and doing charitable things. I could go work and do do good, and and still be able to take care of myself. You know what I mean? That that's kind of the that would be my dream job. 
Yeah. So, uh, I think I need a thousand subscribers so that I can start monetizing. But um, until then, right now, um, hey, if you want to help me out, donate to my cash app. That'd be awesome. Other than that, you don't have to, but it does help, seeing as I work from home. I fix uh, violins and I resell stuff and, uh, you know, God, he gives me, he provides for me. Um, he does, you know. Um, so far, and uh, he's led me to start doing this. I, I, I don't know where this is going to end up. I don't know, but inshallah it'll be something awesome. Um, yeah. So, uh, with that, I'll leave you brothers and sisters with uh, a, a nice, good old salam alaikum. I love you guys. All of you. All of you. Really. And, um, yeah, that's it. Say hi to me, you know? I'll t type hello to me. I'll type back. Message me. I'll message back. Ask me whatever. And if you see I'm doing something wrong, correct me. I'm, I'm very, I'm approachable. Uh, so, you know, approach me. Uh, I, I would love to interact with more Muslims. I, I, I don't know a whole lot of Muslims. Um, you know, so like I'm the only one in my family to be a Muslim. So, I would love that interaction. Assalamu alaikum. Love you guys.